altitude, you're with me in the Sky Raven. Static Lion and Airborne, you guys follow in the Sky Hawk and Sky Shark. Drop Zone and Airwave, you stay here to monitor the situation. Looks like it's that time again, yet another General's Review with myself, Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic80 from the Full Force Podcast, and the one and only Justin Bell from What's On Joe Mind and General's Joes. This episode we are bringing you Lucky People, a cargo plane's worth of content, looking at the G.I. Joe Collectors Club JoeCon 2016 exclusives, or more specifically the Sky Patrol half of the box set. Due to the amount of product in the set we've split these videos into two parts, with the Cobra side in part two. We will start by looking at the original figures these new Jocon characters are based on. Let's go in alphabetical order, shall we? Airborne. We all remember that there was an Airborne back in 1983, but that was technically a different character due to the different file names. With that taken into consideration, there has only been one other version of the new Jocon box set exclusive. Released in 1990, Robert M6, not Franklin E. Talltree, was born in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and was the Sky Patrol's parachute assembler and battlefield medic. He came with a rifle, removable helmet, and the usual parachute with backpack that came with all the Sky Patrol characters. Each backpack that housed the parachute was painted to make it unique to the character, however. Every one of the original Sky Patrol figures had a newly sculpted head on an existing body that was then repainted. Airborne's body was 1986 lift ticket, repainted in silver and grey. All of Sky Patrol were featured regularly on the G.I. Joe Deke cartoon. Colonel, wait! I'm Skydive, and this is Airborne of G.I. Joe Sky Patrol. But we have a team on its way to destroy Biox mainframe right now. All we need is time. First and foremost, the most confusing member of Sky Patrol, uh, released in 1990 originally simply as Airborne. Uh, most of us already knew Airborne as the um, helicopter assault off, uh, operative from 1984 and then six years later Hasbro threw a little wrinkle into things and re-released a figure named Airborne who was not the same uh, as the previous version. The previous version was Franklin Talltree. This version as you can see is Robert Six. And uh, without diving too much into that because um, obviously Chris covered a lot of the history of Sky Patrol in his part of this, we're just going to look at this new figure as a whole and this is um, uh, one of my favorites of the Sky Patrol figures, to be honest with you. It's a really unique combination of parts, first of all. He does have a new head, uh, which not many of these Sky Patrol figures did. Um, the Collector's Club kind of took a page from Hasbro's book and um, and used some new heads, but not totally new heads. Uh, and as you can see, he's got this fitted helmet, very nice red goggles. The helmet is not removable, which has caused a little bit of consternation among the G.I. Joe fandom. I think more for static line than for airborne, but we'll talk about him in a little bit. Uh, but anyway, you can see, if you take a look at that head sculpt, uh, it looks like it could be reused for a different character down the line, possibly uh, Scoop, and actually the Collector's Club confirmed that at JoeCon, that Scoop is going to be part of uh, Figure Subscription Service 5.0. So, um, so people who kind of spotted that in advance, which was quite a few of you, uh, kudos on that, pretty eagle eyes there. Uh, the torso right here is actually from the G.I. Joe Retaliation Firefly, um, the one that was semi-translucent, I believe, is where that came from. And as usual, I'm sure anybody who watches these videos knows how utterly terrible I am at parts identification, and for some reason I still continue to do it with each video and, and most likely butcher it, but I'm going to keep on trying. Um, he's got lift tickets arms with these nice silver shoulder pads, which um, are kind of unique to the original figure. He's got this backpack. Airborne, uh, the Sky Patrol set was a little bit interesting. Three folks came with backpacks. Well, they all came with backpacks. Three of them came with standard military backpacks like this. Three others came with jetpacks. Uh, he's got this great little knife in his hand, as you can see. These are all the accessories that he comes with. He has a little satchel with a great little Sky Patrol logo on it. And he's got this automatic shotgun. I really do like the weapons he comes with. And one thing I really enjoy about this, this uh, series of Sky Patrol figures that the Collector's Club has... Um, Put out there is that uh, pretty much all of them can hold all of their weapons which is really neat there's not a whole lot of extra weapons kicking around um, so that's a nice little touch um, the along with the new head sculpt i really love the the camouflage paint deco it's very reminiscent of the collector's club's kind of urban rain deco they came up with a number of years ago for one of their uh, steel brigade convention sets um, it's obviously reminiscent of the vintage airborne, but a little bit more modern, a little bit tighter on the camouflage pattern. Um, this is a very, very cool figure. It's a great figure to start off with. 
Uh, he is one of my favorite of the Sky Patrol team members. Uh, I do kind of wish he came with a jetpack like many of the others do, but he still looks really awesome. He's very nicely articulated. Even though uh, these lift ticket arms uh, came for the 25th anniversary, uh, they ended up you know, sculpted pretty well, pretty decent range of motion. Um, I really love the kind of the brushed metal on the battle stand there. He is just a really unique, really cool looking figure. He, he doesn't look a whole lot like now, there are some differences between this one and the vintage version, but um, but he still looks excellent. I really like this one. Um, I'm starting off on a high note. I know I sometimes like to start off low and, and lead up to the really good stuff, um, but this guy is, is really good. So I'm starting off strong. But uh, one thing you'll see throughout the rest of these Sky Patrol videos is that just because I'm starting off strong doesn't mean I'm not going to finish strong because um, every figure is actually extremely, extremely well done. But as you can see, like the helmet only kind of resembles Airborne, so they obviously made it with the idea that it could be reused for somebody else. Um, but that's the comparison there between Airborne and older Airborne. Airwave was one of my favorite figures and characters back in the day, based on a number of factors. One, I never had the figure at the time of release in 1990, but wanted him really bad. Two, his initials were CM, Cliff Mewitt, like mine. And three, his specialty was Audible Frequency Specialist, for goodness sake. His deco was awesome and he looked so cool with that 1986 Motor Viper body in different shades of golds and browns. I must admit he was a favourite initially based on the fact that I thought he looked cool and I couldn't get him, but as time has gone on I've become an audio specialist myself and in later life noticed the initial similarity. Another interesting thing to note here is that he shares the exact same file name as 1993's Colonel Courage. Weird. A removable helmet with visor, a rifle and the usual parachute with backpack bulked out the accessories. Airwave was one of my least favourite of the original Sky Patrol versions. I don't really know why. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Motor Viper tooling. Um, thankfully this figure doesn't really use a whole lot of Motor Viper. He uses the vest from... I believe it was originally the Rise of Cobra Nitro Viper, who was kind of made to homage Motor Viper, but wasn't a direct, a direct copy of him. And then it was reused for the Python Patrol Motor Viper that came with a stun in the 2011 convention set. There is a lot of skydive parts here, Pursuit of Cobra skydive parts. His legs and his arms, I believe, are both Pursuit of Cobra skydive, which is cool. I really like that bulky kind of flight suit look. It, it, it works well for uh, airborne specialists like Sky Patrol. Um, so they did a really nice job with that. I love that kind of layered armor on his legs, on his arms. Um, just a very nice, uh, nice look. It's it's somewhat reminiscent to uh, to the vintage version, but not an exact replica, which is something that I really like. Uh, as I think everybody knows, you know, I, I like seeing some new elements on these figures and not just retreads of the vintage things. And um, you can see he's got this great kind of camouflage pattern down here. Uh, variations of tan and brown. It's interesting, uh, back in the 90s, Hasbro didn't really go with a unified color scheme for Sky Patrol if you look past the chrome plating of the vehicles. Um, so obviously these modern interpretations have the same issue. If you want to say issue, it's not really an issue, but um, he, he comes with this, uh, the Firefly Walkie Talkie, which is a nice touch. I like his, um, you know, pretty simple assault rifle there. But yeah, he's got some great gear. Some really nice camouflage. His helmet, I believe, the, the various helmets for the Sky Patrol figures, I think, are from the Pursuit of Cobra Ashiko, which came with a transforming motorcycle. I think that's where this helmet comes from. It's the helmet and visor, which is a match for kind of how, how the Sky Patrol stuff looked. And there's his head, head sculpt underneath. He doesn't have a new head sculpt. He doesn't really need it. Uh, I believe that's... Um, uh, Pursuit of Cobra Dusty, which actually matches the original head sculpt pretty nicely. It's kind of got that slender profile with that sandy blonde hair. So it does a good job matching what the vintage version looked like. Like Airborne, he's got this military backpack. Um, no no jet pack, no flight pack for, for Air Wave. You know, I do want to throw the vintage version kind of next to the new version so you can kind of get an idea of how the two compare. They, they did a fantastic job. Um, the designer of, the, of these figures did a really nice job balancing the vintage homages, but 
also adding some nice newness too. And um, Airwave is a perfect example of that. I mean, you could have easily found, you know, some other little parts for him, but the the baggy flight suit from the Pursuit of Cobra Skydive is um, a very nice choice and uh, kind of differentiates him a little bit from the vintage version and makes him look pretty damn cool. So there's Airwave. Altitude was another figure that only had a single release before the Joe Con set. His body was made up of the 1986 Slipstream repainted in green, gold, brown and silver. He was the recon scout and combat artist of the group. Probably would have been cheaper to get him to animate the cartoon. And impossible. Another interesting tidbit was the fact that John Edward O. Jones was a sergeant major in the army and yet still had to relinquish control of the team to Skydive who was only a sergeant. He was also an Apache Indian, which might have been a nod to the original Airborne character, who was a Navajo Indian. He seemed to come with the most accessories out of the group as well, a removable helmet with visor, pistol, missile launcher with missile, parachute and pack that all of the figures were given. Altitude. If you look at his stand, it's John Edward Altitude Jones, to be precise. And Altitude mixes things up a little bit. The original version, um, I believe, used parts from Slipstream. Uh, and they kind of went in a totally different direction for the Altitude update here. Um, he has got, uh, I believe, the Pursuit of Cobra Duke torso. He's also got those lift ticket arms, the same arms that uh, Airborne came with. His legs, I think, are from Pursuit of Cobra Firefly. Um, he's got this little, you know, kind of clear visor with a removable helmet, which kind of simulates that the original Altitude had like this big flip down clear visor as well. So they were obviously going for a little bit of an homage there. The head sculpt, they went with um, the G.I. Joe Renegade's uh, Mercer, repainted a little bit. It kind of resembles that same flat top look that the original figure had, which is uh, very nice. I like that head choice, head uh, decision. They kind of uh, darken the skin tone up a little bit. Altitude is Native American. The original Altitude was uh, was not quite so so tanned, but they did add some color variation to this version, which I think is is uh, a nice touch. He's also got the military backpack. He's got variations of kind of green and different shades of brown, which the original figure had as well. He comes with a green version of the Viper Rifle. Uh, it's the new Viper Rifle that came with the um, 50th Anniversary Danger in the Docks set, how they came with that big, huge weapons crate that had all those other weapons in it, um, which was really neat. Uh, a couple of these guys come with different weapons from that, that set, which is cool because they're weapons we haven't seen uh, much of. Uh, Altitude comes also with a nice knife. Uh, I really like the subtle color touches on his torso. You can kind of see the little interjections of silver among the, the bronzish bronze gold, which is pretty cool. I like those those little elements there. It shows kind of a keen eye for design. Um, you, you could just do a whole bronze all the way through, but how the original figure had kind of intermixed silver uh, among the bronze, it makes sense for this version to have it too. And like these other figures, he's obviously, you know, kind of uses the vintage version as a template, but goes in a little bit of a different direction, which is kind of cool. And I like, I really like these new parts. These Pursuit of Cobra parts are always a good choice. Um, one of the highlights of G.I. Joe over the past several years was the Pursuit of Cobra line. So anytime they want to use those parts, I'm on board. And there's a comparison shot between the original Altitude and the new Altitude. And uh, you can see the face color is a little bit darker. Uh, you can see they used this color scheme as an inspiration, but they didn't mimic it precisely. They added their own kind of flash and flare, which is really cool. I, I like that. I don't I don't like these, you know, inch by inch, step by step reproductions of vintage figures. I like them to use a little bit of creativity, and they definitely did. They they made uh, sensible color breaks, you know, rather than trying to copy this exactly. They they broke the colors up where it made sense to break them up version. He's also got really nice range of motion because of all these new parts. You know, he works really well. He can hold his weapon really well. Um, Altitude was one of my favorite Sky Patrol characters, and this is a very good rendition of him. I definitely approve. Drop Zone was the only figure I owned as a kid from the Sky Patrol team, and it wasn't a bad one to have. His body construction was that of the 1986 Strato Viper, and with a color scheme of brown, orange, and gray, it really is difficult to recognize the original character underneath. 
His chest mounted machine gun was one of the coolest accessories ever made in the G.I. Joe line, and also one that must have been bloody difficult to use whilst parachuting into enemy territory. As well as that crazy gun, he was also given a very cool removable helmet with visor and all the other usual bits. As the weapons specialist and special forces advisor, he probably had the most badass specialties and featured heavily in the Deke cartoon as a bit of an argumentative and egotistical a-hole. You know, a real man doesn't worry about nothing. A real man eats nails for breakfast and chews rocks for dessert. A real man visits the dentist a lot. Here's Drop Zone. Uh, like the others, Drop Zone is based off of the 1990 Drop Zone, who was a repainted Strato Viper. Uh, this new version uses the Strato Viper um, vest here on top of a G.I. Joe Retaliation Flint torso underneath that little high collar, which is kind of neat. Um, I think he also uses the same legs that that original Strato Viper used, but thankfully um, he's using Retaliation Storm Shadow arms, which kind of mimic the, the narrowness of the Strato Viper and kind of match the narrowness of the figure overall but um, have much better range of motion than those original 25th anniversary Strato Viper arms, which were pretty awful. Uh, he's got that same Ashiko helmet that uh, Airwave came with. He's got one thing about, uh, about Drop Zone, about his vest. This Strato Viper vest, um, the holster on mine just would not stay on. It was separated in the baggie. I don't know if that's the case with all of them, but with mine, it was certainly separated in the baggie. I actually super glued it onto his vest because it just wouldn't stay on. It was bugging the heck out of me. So uh, I glued it on there so so it stays really nice now. Um, your mileage may vary. I don't know. Maybe uh, you might have to do the same thing. I'm not sure. Um, he comes with two guns, an awesome silenced Machine gun, again, I think another one out of that uh, Danger on the Docks weapons crate set. And then this is the G.I. Joe Retaliation, G.I. Joe Trooper, you know, super machine gun, grenade launcher, crazy thing. Comes with both of those. I think that's the technical term. It's it's the AR-27 jumbo crazy thing or something like that. I don't know. The visored helmet and the strato wiper vest. And he's got the back, the uh, jetpack. I love this jetpack. This jetpack is fantastic. It's got the swing wings here. It's got the little ball joint fins. This is probably one of my favorite jetpacks ever. I think um, it was the one that originally came with, I believe, the Rise of Cobra General Hawk and was reused uh, throughout the G.I. Joe Retaliation, or G.I. Joe Resolute line, I think. Um, I may be... Uh, mistaken on that, but I think that's where I remember it from. Um, but I, I absolutely love, love this jetpack. It's a fantastic choice. You know, out of all the jetpacks that uh, the Collectors Club could choose, uh, the, the ones they chose for Sky Patrol and the ones they chose for Flying Scorpion and um, Black Vulture are just about the perfect decisions. Um, they Not all their jetpack decisions were perfect. We'll talk about that in another video, but uh, anyway. His helmet, this helmet does come off. And I believe the head you've got underneath there is the head that we saw originally on the um, uh, G.I. Joe Renegade's version of Law and Order. Uh, that's Law's head, not Order's head, so don't be mistaken about that. The color scheme of different variations of brown. Um, Hasbro, kind of back in the day, and obviously now, um, used some different shades of brown for some of them, different shades of blue for some of them, and then you had Airborne, who was just basically gray. Um, a little bit of, of an odd kind of mix of colors. You can see, um, it's tough to see with the vest on. Um, this figure overall is extremely skinny, kind of tall and narrow, which is okay. I mean, it's people have different body types, so not a big deal. Um, but you can really tell kind of the design aesthetics of this figure. Somebody really thought this out. I mean, the, they gave him very narrow Storm Shadow arms because they knew the torso was narrow. They knew these legs were narrow. And it made sense to have the arms be narrow, so the entire figure, even without his, his web gear and everything, uh, it makes sense. He's, per, he's nicely proportioned, so um, you know they didn't choose like super thick arms to go on this really narrow torso. So it's a really nice mix of parts, uh, both with and without the web gear. The web gear does kind of dangle off him a little bit because his, uh, his torso is narrow, but this little high collar kind of helps blend it a little bit nicer with the figure underneath. And we will drop down the vintage version of Drop Zone, and you can kind of see how they look together. 
and again, you know, inspired by, but not perfect, not a perfect copy of, um, which is exactly what I like. It's very nicely updated. So, um, Drop Zone, another excellent, divert, uh, excellent Sky Patrol uh, character. I'd say, you know, I've covered four of them so far. I'd say my favorite one that I've covered is Airborne. I would say Altitude is close behind. Drop Zone, probably third. Airwave, probably fourth. Uh, but we got two more to go. Next up is Skydive. The original version of the Sky Patrol leader was released by Hasbro in 1990 in the purpley blue, silver and grey colour deco and came with a rifle, pistol and helmet, as well as a silver parachute that came with all the Sky Patrol characters. Real name Felix N. Linton, Skydive was the leader of the Sky Patrol and his secondary specialty was personnel administration. This basically meant that he organised all of the other guys' holiday and gave them yearly management reviews, because admin is the other half of the battle. His body construction was a 1987 Gyro Viper and looked like a completely new figure with the blue deco. He was a regular feature on the Deke cartoon, leading the Sky Patrol in a series of ridiculously implausible missions. Tell them to hold their fire! Lady J is trapped inside the General! Skydive was the only member of Sky Patrol to get another figure and in 2011, Felix N. Linton was released in the Pursuit of Cobra range of figures and had a drastic redesign. Now sporting a green, grey and brown colour deco, he came with a spring-loaded winged glider pack and some really cool accessories allowing for a seriously high halo or hey-ho infiltration. A helmet, complicated vest slash web gear, two nozzles, two missiles, a pistol and a figure stand completed the assortment and was one of the standout figures in a rather incredible lineup of characters. Skydive! Skydive is one of my favourite, uh, along with Altitude, probably my two favourite Sky Patrol characters. Uh, actually, Skydive played a pretty major role in my Dio story. Um, you know, I took advantage of the fact that he, I think he was a captain, and made him one of the higher ranking officers in kind of my final battle between G.I. Joe and Cobra. Uh, and this is uh, the G.I. Joe Collectors Club's version of him, which is essentially, uh, from the neck down, is just a repainted Data Viper which is completely okay because um, Data Viper's baggy uniform really does resemble a flight suit. Um, but it also happens to be one of the nicest tooled figures in the entire line. It, it's really baggy, but at the same time um, manages to have really nice range of motion. So it's pretty tough to, to complain about using Data Viper for anything, even though Data Viper has been at this point used for quite a bit. The blue and white color is very nice. I really like kind of the different shades they chose. It's not a perfect match for the vintage version, but it's pretty close. The way they selected what got silver trim and what got white trim makes a whole lot of sense. He's got these removable goggles from his helmet. Um, the helmet is from the G.I. Joe Retaliation Agent Mouse, which is an excellent choice. It's a nice kind of sleek, close to the head combat helmet. Um, looks very similar to the vintage version. You can see, I think that's 25, 25th anniversary Mutt's head underneath. Works perfectly, and I mentioned it earlier in the review when I was talking about Airwave, how he's made up of Pursuit of Cobra Skydive parts. Yes, there was a Pursuit of Cobra Skydive. Um, yes, I believe he was meant to be uh, this version of Skydive. I think he had the same file name. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong there, but I think they actually went to the point where you know, assuming it was a version of the Sky Patrol Skydive. But anyway, he's got Mutt's head, which is a nice, uh, closely resembles kind of the, the look of the vintage version. And I really love all the little buckles and straps and stuff like that. He comes with Super Laser, originally a, a Pulse, I believe it was a Pulse rifle that came with one of the Rise of Cobra Baroness figures. It's a kind of a, a version of that crazy laser weapon they used in the Rise of Cobra movie. And then he also comes with a more standard machine gun. He's got this great jetpack just like Drop Zone did, uh, done up in skydive colors with the blue base and silver trim. Each one of them has the Sky Patrol logo on the left wing and this SP-16 on the right wing, which I'm assuming means Sky Patrol 2016, maybe? I don't know, but that's what I'm assuming. The flexible wings, which is fantastic. And like I said, he's, he's made of Data Viper, which is, you know, no complaints there whatsoever. He can hold his weapon really nicely, you know, hold it in some great firing poses. It's really nice, you know, the, the Sky Patrol figures obviously are built to be pilots of a sort, but the parts choices and the gear they come with make them completely competent um, and normal looking kind of land soldiers as well. So they can kind of cover both roles, which is really neat. And I know that's kind of what I did in my dial story. I kind of, I had them as airborne troopers, as pilots, but also 
very qualified land operators as well. They can fly in behind the scenes and then dispatch from their aircraft and kick some ass without without flying around. So um, I really like the Sky Patrol logo kind of on that thigh pad. Skydive is an excellent figure. Again, yes, he's a Data Viper repaint. Um, still very, very nice. And here he is next to the old school Skydive. As you can see, a pretty close color match. You know, it's tough to tell whether my Skydive is a little discolored or if the new version just it doesn't match him completely. I really don't care. The blue and white and silver works well enough for me. You can tell it's Skydive just by looking at him. Uh, they did a really fantastic job updating Skydive for kind of the next generation. Really great figure. Uh, I really love the classic version too, based on the Cobra Gyro Viper uh, figure. That was the interesting thing about Sky Patrol. They all used existing bodies and threw some new heads on there just to get some more mileage out of the parts but they ended up doing that very very well and there is skydive finally we have static line another figure i wanted really bad originally but failed miserably due to the limited availability in my home county of norfolk seeing the team in the product catalogs didn't help either and only created more heartache and pain for my nine slash ten year old self the only black member of Sky Patrol added to the intrigue of the toy for me, mainly due to the lack of diversity in the small coastal village that I grew up in. Using a chrome silver, blue, black and white repainted 1987 backstop body and a cool removable helmet in a silver and black colour scheme meant that Static Line was the only member that matched the chrome finish on the famous Sky Patrol vehicles. There were some silver accents on the other members, but Static Line had a large proportion of his upper body adorned in the shiny material. Real name, Wallace J. Baducci, was the demolitions expert and the guy that maintained the aircraft. Can anyone else foresee an issue with that? Hopefully, he never got the two specialties confused. Static Line. Static Line, I am trying to really get my head around. He's, he's a cool figure. Uh, I really like the parts choices. Um, he would have been much, much improved if they could have found a way to give him a removable helmet. You can see he does have a brand new head sculpt, which is always appreciated. But the new head sculpt does take his, his helmet and kind of glue it permanently to his head. Um, and the way his face is kind of looking out from, from within the helmet, it, uh, it, it could be a little bit better. It's... Not terrible, and I like that they gave him a new helmet, but a new head, but it doesn't look quite as nice as some others that I've seen in the past. But, you know, it's kudos to tr for, for trying, and, and like Airborne, one could look at this head and interpret that quite possibly it could be used as maybe a backstop down the line. Um, it's definitely got that kind of unique shape to it, so I could see it being reused for other characters along the way. Um, but as it stands... This is Static Line. We'll talk about Static Line first. And he comes with this cool knife. You can see in his right hand there. Comes with Crazy Gun. Interestingly, I don't think they really took the vintage figures into account much when they developed these weapons. Um, really because they couldn't. I mean, all those original Sky Patrol figures came with such unique weaponry. Like Static Line had this crazy thing that wrapped around his waist and had you know machine gun in the front. And there's nothing out there that mimics that. So they kind of had to... Get a little bit creative, which is fine. Um, he also comes with this little satchel. Um, it's it's totally not a man purse, by the way. He's got like bombs and blades and all sorts of manly stuff in there. There's no While I'm doing that, you can also see he's got this removable holster, which is very cool. Adds a little bit of design flair. It's not anything that the original backstop, or backstop, see now I'm going to call him backstop. It's not anything that the original static line had. And, and, you know, of course, the reason I'm calling them backstop is because the vintage figure from the neck down was backstop. But anyway, um, the original static line did not have a holster like that, but they added it to kind of cover up a little bit of the silver, which is nice. He's got the G.I. Joe Resolute Duke legs, uh, G.I. Joe Resolute Cobra Trooper arms, um, the Pursuit of Cobra beachhead torso, and the new head sculpt. Very nice articulation. All those parts, like I said, are pretty new. Um, very tight elbows so he can fire a, a machine gun really well if he needs to. And he's got one of these fantastic jet packs as well. His is a, you know, similar to uh, Skydive's, but a little bit different. You know, kind of 
you know, silver with a blue trim rather than blue with a silver trim. Uh, the blue is a little bit lighter. Uh, so it changes it up a little bit. uses some similar colors, but does change it up. And that is Static Line. Static Line is not a bad figure. It's not my favorite. I'm not a big fan of, of the way they did the head sculpt. And I know it was probably cost savings measures. They probably couldn't quite tool up a uh, head and removable helmet. Um, they've been able to do it in the past, but for whatever reason, they couldn't make it work this year. Um, you know, stuff happens. But, um, you know, whatever the case... It's a, it's a decent figure. He's he's not top of the line, but uh, he's very nice. Great shade of blue. His his colors actually you know complement skydives pretty well. It's like we've got all these different kind of little subgroups. You know, we've got static line and skydive who who look good together. Then we've got you know drop zone and altitude who look good together. And then airwave is kind of off on his own, and, and airborne's kind of off on his own. There is the vintage backstop. Backstop, shut up. The vintage static line. And I think mine's just a little bit discolored. I think this, this brighter white is more, more how he should look. Mine's just, um, he's been playing in the mud. But even the, come on, back in 1990, they can remove a helmet. Why can't we do it now? And there's static line, oh, can't you? Anyway, here's the Sky Patrol team shot. We've got a skydive. We've got drop zone, altitude, airborne. Static line and airwave. And believe it or not, ever since 1990, I could not keep drop zone and altitude straight. I kept on swapping them around in my head. It wasn't until 2016 when the Collectors Club released this set that I could finally remember who altitude and who drop zone were. Um, drop zone, altitude. So uh, there's a good thing that came out of this set. But here's the whole team photograph. A very nice set. I'm really a big fan of the way they put together the Sky Patrol. I think probably my favorite is airborne and i'd say second favorite is probably skydive um third favorite is probably you know i keep shifting around i think i'm going to be airwave uh, because of the skydive parts are great um altitude probably comes next uh, drop zone very close behind uh, static line kind of bringing up the rear if he had a removable helmet he'd be a lot better but you know they're all really none of them is you know, a whole lot better than the other. They're all very, very solidly built, very nice action figures, really great convention exclusives. I'm very happy with the way they were put together, the way they were designed. Uh, they did a really nice job. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm having a little contest with myself to see how many times I can say really at the end of this video. I've lost track. But anyway, nice updates to the original. Some newness to them as well. I really like the jetpacks. I wish the jetpacks maybe were available for all of them. I'm not sure if it was a cost or if they were just trying to differentiate things a little bit. But the figures as a whole do really well, and I'm very happy with the set as a whole. And kudos to the JoJo Collectors Club and the design team behind this set. Uh, we will be taking a look at the Air uh, Cobra Adders coming up next. Uh, but this is the Sky Patrol set. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a like. Please consider subscribing. If you didn't like it, please leave me a comment and let me know what you didn't like about it so I can try to make these better. But thank you very much for watching. This is Justin from GeneralsJoes.com. That's another one for the archives. Thanks for watching this review by Justin Bell of GeneralsJoes.com and What's on Joe Mind, and from myself, Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic80 from The Full Force. If you've enjoyed the video, why not subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think on any of our numerous social networking platforms, with the exception of Snapchat for obvious reasons. Goodbye and see you next time for another General's Review.